As you know, brothers, Pope Francis, in his homilies, he observes the verbs in the gospel and makes his reflection about it. So today, let's do the same thing. Let's observe the verbs in this passage and they, and they learn how to pray. But we are all tired now, so we're just gonna see six verbs, so it's, it's quickly. First action, or oh, first verb. They were discussing. They were discussing on their way about everything they experienced. They were remembered the good things Jesus did, but at the same time they were sad because the same Jesus had died and everything was over. The dream of them was over. But in some way they were praying, and this is the main part here, brothers. They were praying. Many times we feel the same away in our lives. In our prayer life, this symbolizes the moments of despair and difficulties where often everything seems lost. Also, this can be interpreted in your personal life, in the church, in the legion, and so on. But also, we can see a positive point here. Again, they were praying. We should also be praying in these moments of our life. Second verb, second action. Jesus approached and listened to them. In this situation, in this context, <coughs> Jesus approached and asked, how are they? Jesus today, we are tired, we know, but Jesus is asking us how we are. And it's hard to recognize that, but he's asking brothers, and we should make this experience. I'm not speaking by our feelings, you know? It is something true. Jesus also listened patiently to their stories and responded in a very unique way. A little, bit, a little bit strong, but he answered them. This is an experience when we pray to God and we sometimes felt he ignored us, let us down or fail to answer our prayer. We may feel let down by God, abandoned by him, neglected by him, and that we cannot trust in him. These are our real feelings. This is true. Every day, or not every day, but sometimes, this can happen in our life. They should not be ignored, those feelings, those bad times with Jesus. They should not be ignored. It is in times like this when we need to dig deeper and try to trust once again. Begin by being honest with God. Tell Him about the pain you are feeling, share with him the feelings in your heart of being let down, abandoned, or forgotten. As a man, we don't like to, to be weak with God, but it's, it's a very important a way to purify our heart, purify our pride. Ask him for the grace and healing you need to be able to trust once again. Pray for the grace of renew and strength that can help you pass through this time and have confidence once again in his love. Third action, or third verb. They are not able to recognize him. Jesus approaches, but they are not able to recognize him. Here, I do ask brothers, in our lives here in Cheshire, let to be realistic here, in this Eucharist hour, how are we gonna recognize Jesus in, in the moments of, of cross and difficulty, if in moments of peace and tranquility we do not seek him? Again, brothers, Jesus approaches. He asks, he answers their questions, and Jesus is doing the same with us today. He approaches, he asks, he answers our questions, and finally, Jesus loves us. The same happens with us many times in prayer. Jesus approaches, asks, answers, and finally, Jesus loves us every day in prayer. In that prayer, there we are sleeping. He asks, he loves us. Here in the Eucharist, Jesus is doing the same with us. 
The life of prayer, brothers, it is not a petition. Sometimes it can be, but it is not a petition to the Lord to promote ourselves in the spirit dimensions. As St. Teresa of Jesus says, la oración es tratar de amor con quien sabemos que nos ama. We come to pray to deal with love, with whom we know that loves us. Prayer is about love. Sometimes Jesus tells us difficult things, it's hard to accept that, but he knows what is best for us. And here I repeat for you, you really trust that Jesus knows what is best for you? Personal questions, personal answers. Let us ask brothers, Jesus, to increase our faith on him. For action, they invite him. Soon after, the disciples of Emmaus invite Jesus to stay with them, to invite brothers. It is very, it is very important. As Brother Alejandro once said in this Eucharist hour, and I still remember that, to invite. Invite Jesus in our spiritual life. Invite Jesus in the every moment. Invite Jesus when we are sad, when we are tired, when we are happy, in the daily studies, and finally in our lives. Five action. Jesus revealed himself. Many times Jesus revealed his heart and his face to us as he did with the disciples of Emmaus. All this story, this path of prayer life that the disciples of Emmaus walk through is culminates at the Eucharist. Jesus revealed his love, his face in, the break to br in, in breaking the bread. In our life of prayer, many times we do not see, we do not feel his presence. But in the Eucharist, by faith, we see and you feel Jesus, whatever we like it or not. He is here. We must love the Eucharist because it's Jesus himself. Sixth and last action. He burns. Whatever, wherever Jesus passes, he burns with the fire of love and truth. The disciples of Emmaus felt that fire and afterwards announced with joy. Brothers, let us ask Jesus to increase our faith and to burn our hearts with this fire of love and truth. Let us remember, brothers and fathers, today Jesus approaches, listen to us. He are not able, we are not able to recognize him many times. But we invited him because we have goodwill. And he, re he reveals himself and finally he burns our hearts with this fire of love and truth. So, if nothing, if nothing touched my heart in this Eucharistic hour, at the least, let us make this petition as the disciples of Jesus did after see the example of their master. Lord, teach me how to pray. 